Hi everyone and welcome to the Out of Office Traveler, the channel where two friends from London with corporate jobs show you how we still manage to travel the world even if it's not full time. Today we've got a long weekend trip to Romania. If you've been watching, you know we tested out a group trip recently for the first time and actually really liked it, and so this time we decided to do the same with a company called Much Better Adventures. The trip we did was called Bear Watching and Castle Hopping in Romania. We aren't sponsored by Much Better Adventures or any other group-based companies, but they seem to offer a lot of long weekend trips, which is great for those of us with limited time off, so we thought we would check it out. Romania is a country in Eastern Europe, and we start our trip in the capital, Bucharest, which is a three-hour flight away from London. On this tour, we were going from Bucharest to Brasov, which is the sixth largest city in Romania, and where we'll be exploring some of Romania's beautiful nature. If you've been watching us for a while, PS if not, please subscribe, you probably know by now that we have to start the day with a coffee, and in this case, a unicorn iced tea. Before I met up with the group first, I just wanted to get my bearings around the city and have a bit of an exploration morning. The first thing that struck me was the different architectural styles here and how pretty some of the buildings were. There are a number of beautiful landmarks around the city, including the Curtea Veche, which was built in 1559 and is the oldest church and religious building maintained in its original aspect in Bucharest. You can also find University Square, a key reference point for locals to meet, but also with historical significance, given the square also played an important role in the gathering of protests against communism. Nowadays, it houses key sculptures as well as the Bucharest Municipal Museum, the National Theatre, Coltea Hospital, and the buildings of the University of Bucharest. There's also Revolution Square, a historical landmark. In 1989, this square heard the last speech by the communist leader, which led to mass demonstrations and ultimately to the end of the communist regime. So then we get to our first must-stop destination, which is the Pasajul Victoria, an alleyway that's tucked into the middle of two streets, Maca and Villa Cross. The passage is lined with a variety of shops, cafes, restaurants, and art galleries, creating a vibrant and bohemian atmosphere. The mix of colors, lights, and aromas adds to the charm here and makes it a great place to explore and unwind. From there, it's about a 10 minute walk to a different type of recommendation, checking out the Carteresti bookshop. This is the carousel location. If you're a bookshop lover, this is a must do. Inside this multi-story bookshop, you'll find a blend of old world charm and modern design and light airy feeling. In the center, you'll find the stunning spiral staircase that gives a sense of a carousel. This is a great place to spend some time and relax for a bit, or just take some beautiful pictures or get gifts from your Bucharest visit. The bookstore is even open long hours. Okay, so if you're a tourist and you want some traditional Romanian food, you have to check out the staples at Cara Cuber, which means the beer cart. From the bookshop, this is only a three minute walk away. This place offers so much more than just beer. This is a family friendly place. Not only is it beautifully decorated, but also has traditional folk music. Here, you can find hearty stews, grilled meats, and iconic dishes. Try the mamaliga, which is a cornmeal porridge, the sarmale, cabbage rolls, and papanasi, a local donut for dessert. Like I said, it's obviously touristy, but I thought it was fun and would recommend. An alternative place to have authentic Romanian cuisine for lunch or even dinner is Hanu Lui Manuk or Manuk's Inn. I went to check out the place in the morning, and as you can see, there's a really pretty relaxing courtyard which used to be used as stables for passing mercenaries. They have live music here as well. Speaking of food, stop by a supermarket at some point to try this Romanian staple called Dobrogia Eugenia, which is a local biscuit made from plums, and as you can tell, I thought it was super good. After lunch, I visited this monastery located in the city center not far from our lunch spot. This monastery is called the Stavropolios Monastery, which is an Eastern Orthodox monastery for nuns founded in 1724. It's small, but very impressive with a picturesque courtyard. The monastery is known for its connection to Byzantine music. Okay, so this is the part of the video where I tell you I messed up. The number one thing to do in Bucharest is to go and visit the parliament. It's not just any old parliament, it's one of the largest public buildings in the world. It's so big, the show Top Gear did a race inside the building. The issue is you have to book in advance and while I thought I was being organized, I left it too late and there were no spaces remaining for the days I was there, so do book that one in advance. One of the most famous things to do in Bucharest is to catch the fountain show once it's dark. The shows are held every weekend from May to October, so make sure to check online when they're on. The fountains are located in Uniri Square, were built at the start of the communist period and restored to life with an investment of 9 million euros. 
The show boasts that they have the first fountain show in Europe completely designed via computer with color, music, and 3D projections on the water. The show is really long, it's 45 minutes in fact, and is completely free. They actually hold the Guinness World Record for the longest choreographed fountain system in the world. Having seen both the Bellagio Fountain Show in Vegas and the Dubai Fountain Shows, I was really surprised by how good the show was, especially because you can get really close to the fountains. If you're there Friday, Saturday, or Sunday in the summer, definitely squeeze this into your plans. To close off our stop in Bucharest, we got to check out the nightlife. It's worth saying, Bucharest, for all its history, turns into a bit of a party town with a wide range of bars, live music, and clubs. So sit back, grab a cocktail, and enjoy. Also, just a friendly reminder to give us a subscribe if you're enjoying our content. Then, we were off to go up north. The next day, we traveled two hours or so, passing some of those famous French-looking Bucharest monuments, towards another city in Romania called Brasov. Just before we reach Brasov, we had a stop at the impressive Pele's castle. Romania is known for a number of beautiful castles, including the home of Dracula, more on that later, but Pele's castle is a great destination that combines history, art, and natural beauty. It was inaugurated in 1883 and built for King Carol I of Romania, under whom Romania gained its independence. The castle was built with neo-Renaissance architecture characterized by its intricate detailing, elegant facades, and ornate interiors. The castle's design was influenced by a blend of European architectural styles. The castle is nestled in the Carpathian Mountains, providing breathtaking views of the surrounding landscapes. The castle's terraces, gardens, and nearby Pellicer Castle, which you can also visit, add to the beauty of the setting. We got a guided tour of each of the rooms, which I really recommend, as each room has a whole range of artifacts and a different story behind it. There was a queue to get in, but it wasn't too bad. You can also explore the grounds, which are beautiful in and of itself, and provide a great opportunity for photos. This was definitely an unexpected highlight. The castle's in great condition and is almost Disney-like. I thought it was 100% worth the visit. Then, we arrived at the city of Brasov, which is one of the best preserved medieval cities in Europe, and centrally located in Romania as Romania's sixth largest city. We stopped first to try local food, which was a delicious stew and this lovely dessert. After fueling, it was time for a walk around. I was pleasantly surprised by how charming this town was. There is a Hollywood-like sign in the background, and you can find a beautiful viewpoint from where you can see the whole city, if you go up the White Tower. Note, this is a steep walk, but it's worth it for these views. If you've got time, this is a good place for a walking tour to learn the history of the old city, and it's a convenient place to stay if you want to explore different attractions in the area. One of the main reasons I went to Romania, though, was to see the bears. This is one of the only places to see wild brown bears in Europe. A 30-minute drive away from Brasov, you can do a tour where you have the opportunity to watch wild bears from the safety of a hidden cabin in their natural habitat. The cabins have a one-way glass so that you can see the bears but they can't see you. This was definitely the highlight of my trip. The bears come out to these logs you can see in the background to feed because it's a way for the park rangers to monitor the number of bears in the area and also to keep tabs on the health and safety of the bears. We got to watch the bears for about an hour whilst in these cabins. We had to remain incredibly silent, but as you can see, we're nice and close. After seeing the bears in the wild, it was time to learn more about how precious these wild bears are and how badly they've been treated by humans in the past. 30 minutes or so drive away from watching the wild bears, and about a 45 minute drive out of Brasov, you'll find the Liberty Bear Sanctuary. This is the largest sanctuary for captive bears in Europe. It provides a safe and natural environment for bears that have been rescued from captivity such as circuses, bad zoos, and private owners. Whilst these bears will never go back to the wild, Liberty provides a safe home for these animals to live in comfort from now on. Then it was time for our last stop, Bran Castle, a 30 minute drive away. This is the famous Romanian castle that is often referred to as Dracula's castle and is a medieval fortress that dates back to the 14th century. Its striking towers, stone walls, and turrets create an authentic and captivating medieval atmosphere. Bran Castle is closely associated with the Dracula legend, inspired by Bram Stoker's famous novel. 
While it's important to note that the historical Vlad the Impaler, upon whom Dracula is loosely based, is not directly linked to the castle, the connection to the legend adds an air of mystery and intrigue. If I'm honest, I found the castle to be a bit over-commercialized, and the interior of the castle has a number of tacky decorations. There are a number of stalls selling gifts and lots of tourist restaurants around the castle. While the backdrop is still impressive, if I had to choose between Dracula's castle and Pele's, I would head to Pele's. After just a few nights, it was time to pack up and return to London. This was an easy long weekend trip to fit in, and the tour group made it pretty easy to explore medieval cities, nature and wildlife, and castles all in one without having to worry too much about the logistics. But I do think this would be an easy trip to do on your own as well via a car or day tours. If you've been to Romania, let us know if you have any tips to add in the comments below and if you prefer Pele's or Dracula's castle.